Welcome to Florida Focus, a college football podcast. My name is Brandon, and yes, I am still a lifelong Florida State Seminole fan. And I am Chris, and I am a pleased Gator fan. And we are putting aside our differences as rivals to bring in the fantastic world of college football throughout the Sunshine State. And Chris, it is finally time for you to recap a Florida Gator game. I know you are excited. Yeah. I am obviously not given the result of the Florida State at Miami game, but uh, the Gators were victorious on the road at Old Miss. Uh, let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to let you, you know, take the mic here. Let me know what you think they, you, your team did against Old Miss, Lane Kiffin, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, did anyone actually play besides Kyle Pitts? I'll let you dive into that. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, yeah. Florida goes to Ole Miss um, and wins fifty-one to thirty-five. High-scoring game. I did not. I didn't see this coming. Uh, a lot of a lot of people, if they're honest, did not see this coming. We knew that we had we had the potential to do this. Um, I thought it would be a little bit closer, lower-scoring game, sloppy game, and it was sloppy on a half um, of the side of the ball for Florida. But fifty-one points on the road. And the, I mean, if you take the takeaways from this are, wow, our offense is good, and wow, our defense is not that good. Um, so you're really high on our offense, and you, I mean, looking down the road, you're concerned um, for your defense. And I don't know if you do this, Brandon, when you watch a Florida State game. Um, when I'm watching a Gator game, I'm always watching the game and then kind of, you know, seeing what we're doing as far as schemes. <laughs> but I'm also like thinking okay how is this going to play out later on in the year okay yeah i've done that um and so i'm like okay good so what do we need to do for this next quarter for this team that we're playing right now and i'm also like whoo uh, man whenever we play south carolina or georgia or tennessee how is uh, how is that gonna uh, play out and, you know this scheme that we're playing hmm. or this player uh, th- this matchup if you will so uh, that's what we we're that's what happened a lot with this old Miss game. That's usually what happens with with the first game of the season. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a lot of like knee jerk reactions. And, you, and I'm glad that we take a couple of days because it's a lot of knee jerk reactions <laughs> to this game. But we'll get into the positives and then I'll I'll take a page from your book, um, positives and then room for improvement. Okay. Um, the positives, obviously, it's uh, hashtag trash to trask. I mean, Kyle to Kyle. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I think of this a couple of days, and then I finally get a chance to say it and <laughs> fumble it. But we, we all know what you meant. Kyle to Kyle. Um, I mean, Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts, the Kyles just went off. I mean, breaking records, career day. I mean, the, the offense overall looked crazy, crazy good. Now, before we go, before I you know pull the knee back there, um, no one's really been talking about Ole Miss's defense. They're not known for their defense, so I, I get that. But the first game of the season, with if, with everything given going on with COVID, to come out and drop 51 on the road against an SEC team, that's impressive. Trask goes for over 400 yards, six touchdowns. Um, I believe he's, he's starting to draw comparisons to Joe Burrow, where I, which I, even I'm like, okay, hold up. <laughs> hold up. I like that. I like that he is, but hold up. Um, one game. Um, Kyle Pitts, our tight end. I mean, this guy goes off eight catches, 170 70 yards, four touchdowns. He was um, – anywhere you put him up, he's going to make a catch. He was just making acrobatic catches. He was jump ball catches. He was stiff-arming people. I mean, it really wasn't fair. It's like playing a video game. It really was. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Gator passing goes for 446, and we almost rushed as a team for 200 yards rushing. Um, and you're, you're getting um, so many targets. I think I think he hit 11 different receivers. Trask did. Um, a lot of people touched the ball rushing to contribute for that that two that 200 yards rushing. And it was really good. The line held up. Brett Hagee got SEC Lineman of the Week. Oh. Um, so really good uh, performance. This is what we thought we were going to see from um, – or could see from the Gators. We we knew Mullen came in to do stuff like this, and it was nice to actually see him doing it. Um, I think this is the first game where 
he wasn't doing the play calling. He's still the offensive guy, but Brian Johnson, quarterback, I believe quarterback's coach, was doing the play calling. So I hope this is a sign of things to come on the offensive side of the ball um, for Florida. Other guy, I mean, obviously you got the Kyles that everyone's talking about, but there's so many other guys that stepped up this game. Uh, Kadarius Tony, um, he went for I believe over a hundred total yards, catching a touchdown pass, almost breaking a a run for a touchdown there. Um, he's seeming to become he's becoming more of a complete receiver because in the past he was a a gadget guy, you know, um, do a trick play here and there, but now he's doing a drag route. He's running a post. Um, he's also also doing that. Um, the, the gadget stuff, if you will. He's also returning punts and kicks. So if he can remain healthy, he's going to be great because you know a lot of people are going to be doubling Kyle Pitts. And so now if you have to worry about Tony um, and a guy like Trevon Grimes, also a deep guy you have to worry about. Oh, yeah. So I'm really liking that we're spreading the ball around. Um, obviously, a lot of people are now after this game are going to go after Pitts. But I, I'm confident that if they do that, that's going to free up a guy like um, Grimes or Tony, um, a Copeland, or even some of the um, running backs out of the backfield. I think a guy like Malik Davis and um, Wright, you know, can catch ball, balls and look good in, in, in open space. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm pleased with our running game. It's not. I don't think you're going to with Dan Mullen. You're not going to have a guy that's going to um, be the Guy's going to you know carry it 13 times for 110 yards and two touchdowns. That's, that's not what we're going to do. He's going to rotate people in, and we seem pretty effective running the ball. Um, Malik Davis started to see he looked like the Malik Davis that we saw as a freshman before the injury. Okay. Um, he his mobility, he he juked a guy out pretty good. Um, Damian Pierce, um, he's the the bowling ball and. He's going to be a hard guy to tackle. He actually, um, on that deep pass to Pitts, if you watch the tape, he, um, he there's a guy blitzing off the edge there. He picked up the blitz, and not only picked up the blitz, he pancaked the linebacker. Ooh, nice I believe stat. it was a linebacker. I love pancake stats. Yeah, yeah, from a, a, a running back too. So um, so I, I was just pleased all overall offensively. Um, special teams was solid. McPherson hitting some long ones there. Um, again, Tony, um, he didn't do anything crazy with the ball, but he was real smart, um, knowing because he's a guy who he, once he gets the ball, you know, he just wants to score. He wants to go, even if he has to run 50 yards to the left, then go 50 yards to the right. He wants to score. But the fact (laughs) that he, you know, fair caught the ball and was just smart, um, returning was, was good. Um, so everywhere across the board, offense, you know, A plus. Go to the defense, not so much, but there were some bright spots on right. defense to we'll talk about. Um, and the main guy is Ventrell Miller, the middle linebacker. We were curious, or I was, how he was going to replace David Reese at the middle, um, and I just wasn't sure. We had seen some last year, but he is very athletic not afraid to hit um and he had 15 total tackles um including a sack so i was he was definitely the the bright spot um and then you see a guy like a freshman um dexter the five-star d lineman getting a crucial pick um brenton cox the transfer from georgia getting the deflection you see some potential on the d line um there and also uh, yeah so Miller and those two guys, you see flashes of defense. But overall, defense was a little disappointing, <laughs> not going to lie. Um, we know Lane can, is, is an offensive guy. He needs, he's got talent um, with Corral and, um, and other guys um, on the defense. So a right. little, little disappointing there. But as far as bright spots, Ventral Miller was the main guy on defense. So that's, that's the, the positives that you see from Florida. What are you, what are your thoughts? I, I think the biggest thing for it to take a step forward was enhancing the rushing attack. Mm-hmm. Florida could still go ten and two, eleven and two with the Orange Bowl win last season, rushing forty five yards a game. And I don't care who it's against. It's an SEC team. 
you still got nearly 200 and mm-hmm. you're spreading the ball around. That's, that's a really good sign. Yeah. Uh, you, you couple that with the already potent passing attack, which took a step forward. Let's, let's all call it as it is. Yeah. Then uh, that, that makes Florida's offense very dangerous. So that was, that was something I noticed there. Uh, Trask continued to be good. He showed decent signs of improvement. There's, you know, if you ask any team in the off season, is your team going to be better or worse than last season? Everyone say they're going to be better. Yeah. Uh, but Kyle Trash showed it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that's good. Yeah, Pitts. I, I think maybe we underestimated this guy. This is uh, this is a fantastic game. They were even splitting him out wide as a wide receiver, and he's still catching passes. That mm-hmm. means this guy has speed as a tight end. Uh, it's he is the John Mackey Award winner unless someone beats it from him right now. Yeah. I, I mean, don't see any reason why there's anyone else. You know, Brevin Jordan of Miami maybe contest for that but it's it's his to lose for sure yeah he's definitely he's a front runner for there and i you could say you could make a case for jordan too um but i mean i'm curious to see how he responds now that the cat's out of the bag now that mm-hmm. the spotlight's on him good um but yeah yeah with everything you said you you hope for improvement especially at the quarterback position but it's nice to actually see it you're right yep um as far as things to improve on offensively, not too much. Obviously, I mean, you want to get um, you want to you want the offensive line to to get a little, little bit more push on running on, in the run game. I can't complain too much though. Um, I I was kind of curious about um, Dan Mullen's play calling or his decision to put Emory Jones in while things were clicking with Trask. Jones goes – I mean, obviously, hindsight, he, he throws that pick. Um, but I think in the second half when he put Jones in, I think it seemed to run smooth. But I think it, it messed up the rhythm there. Um, and Jones has to make a, a better decision um, when he threw that pick. But that's about it. I mean, we got a lot of guys' um, uh, touches, um, a lot of young guys' touches. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Improvements on the defense, goodness. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I know that. I mean, Sean Davis went out with the targeting early. That definitely hurt hurt us. We had some starters not playing Campbell and and Stewart. Um, so I, would have been different. How much different if they were in? I, I don't know if all three of those guys were in. Jeremiah Moon didn't play. So. I think that will be better. They should be playing, but that definitely hurt. And I was a little disappointed in our corners. Um, Marco Wilson, Kyer Elam, where were you all game? Now, I will say that when we got beat, it was it was a safety's fault. Majority of the time, it was a safety's fault. Donovan Steiner has been there forever. Looks like he was a freshman. Um, so, I, like, what are you doing? Um, so that's where maybe uh, Davis or, or Stewart – would be better, you know, but even like the backup corners of these young freshmen, I mean, it's tough. You, you throw a, f- a couple of freshman safeties in there and they look like freshman safeties. Um, so that kind of concerns me a little bit. You got a guy who, I mean, we, we threw for four forty six. Ole Miss, they threw for four forty three. I mean, they're right behind us. Um, they had a receiver go for 200 yards receiving, um, in, wow. in more. So, th- it's really concerning. Um, now, I know, like I said, um, not every team's going to be Ole Miss. I, I mean, Lane, the Lane train's known for, for uh, his offense. We're going to have some guys back in. Oh, I mean, at least we think they're back in because Mullen's like, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, in the death chart came out, and, and Stewart and Campbell weren't on it. And everyone's like, why aren't they on it? And mm-hmm. Mullen's like, oh, they're available. Well, they didn't show up. So... Who knows? If they're on the depth chart now. I'll, I'll believe it when when a kickoff happens. Okay, um, fair enough. <laughs> so assuming that those guys are there, I think that uh, things will settle down. Um, some of the young guys that were thrown in, now they have a little bit more experience. But I, I, I'm not going to lie. During the game, I'm like, where is that panic button at? You know, I'm, I'm searching for the panic button. I didn't hit it. I didn't pull it out. Okay, good. But I'm thinking, like, did I leave it in the closet? Is it in the garage? <laughs> I was mentally thinking, where did I put the panic button? Um, now that I have some time to to uh, calm down, <laughs> um, 
but I do, you know, I, I did like what Mullen and and, and Kyir Elam, our, our corner, said. Like they owned up to it. Like Mullen's like, listen, they we haven't tackled. We know we need to work on tackling. Kyir Elam, Elam was like, I'm ticked off. I'm like, good, you should be ticked off. Um, so they're owning up to it. They're not making excuses, and I truly feel that we'll be better um, as the year goes on on defense. Um, you know, not every team's going to be like Ole Miss. Um, so. But it it helps knowing that we have an offense that can um, keep up with other teams' offense, right? If we don't, I, I would like to see more um, consistent pass rush. There were moments where our guys were um, getting in the backfield, but it wasn't consistent. I did notice after rewatching it, the second half we were only rushing three a lot of times and dropping into zone. Okay. I don't know if that's to cover up for um, the inexperience in, in, you know, in the secondary or what, or that was just a game plan. We were just kind of, kind of took our foot off the gas as far as blitzing. So I'm curious, you know, it, will that change? So I wasn't as hold up as I was during the game, but okay. I will say that has to get fixed. If we want to beat Georgia, if we want to beat a and M, if we want to beat LSU, like if we want to beat those bigger teams, we have to shore up the defense. Um, if we, if we want to go to the next step, I gotcha. And I'll uh, I'll tack on to your you know going three down linemen. It was it was really curious because early on they seemed to have success with that. There was even one defensive lineman who tipped one up, and the other guy caught it for an interception. You know when Ole Miss dropped right. down late. So maybe that's it. Um, you know, sometimes teams switch to like a three four or a three five five, three five three. Excuse me, and then mm-hmm. I do my math there, where they're trying to cover up deficiencies on defensive line. I don't think that's the case with Florida. So, yeah, maybe they're trying to throw them off. Um, Florida State was trying to do that a little bit with Miami because they saw some things UAB did that worked a little better than Louisville, um, or you know, back several years ago. Four State would do like a, a three four to cover up major deficiencies, injury or just skill. Right, and right. yeah, you're right. I don't think either of those are stemming from those kinds of issues for UF. So that is an interesting choice. And yeah, I mean there there's some concern there. I've always talked about how much I've always loved Florida secondary and kind of let the fans down in this yeah. one. I can understand giving yep. thirty five is, is a little bit of concern. I know some of that was with trickery and Ole Miss was trying to get what they could with the players right. that they had kind of deal. But, uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting debate to have. <laughs> it's like, was yeah. this first week jitters? Was this like a short off season? It's certainly not talent. Right. right. Um, and so it, it is curious to see where do you go from here and how do you fix it pretty much immediately? The SEC schedule is daunting. You just can't lollygag around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of – and I guess what really concerns me is knowing that with this type of season, with it just being SEC, with um, with COVID now out there, if if guys, I think you just got to be used to playing without a couple guys every game, and if that's how we play without a couple guys, I'm that's what concerns me. I think if we are full strength, I'm not that worried, but we're gonna have to. That has to be. That's probably gonna be the norm going forward is being down a handful yeah. of guys on each side. And I'm like, if that's how we play without, Ooh, you know? So it is one game. Um, it, a lot of different circumstances going on. So I'm not too crazy, but I will say, I, I may admit during the game, I was a little bit like, uh Oh, Lee, this is going to be rough down the road, but, um, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I will say, um, our friend, um, Jared, who, who, well, can we just call him the our, our recruiting expert or the official yeah. recruiting expert of we the podcast? We should put him on salary. He's pretty much that. Anyway. Yes, let's do that. Um, he was texting me during the game, and he was like, "Oh, so basically, we're we're Oklahoma now. Is is what we are? We can out. It's going to be a shootout every game." I'm like, "Oh dear, I can't. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I'm not ready for that." But I mean, as of right now, we, we kind of look like it. Well, I, I'm not quite prepared to go there. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> the the analogy and I get it. I mean, you saw what Mike Leach did against LSU, so yeah, right. the comparison there in Week One is pretty easy. But 
you know, if you're a Gator fan and you're circling a Georgia game, which we know everyone is, I don't think they can pass the ball. So there you go. I don't think in your most important game of the season, even if you play less than perfect on that side of the ball, I don't think you have much to worry about. You can definitely outscore them. I think you scored 17 last year. Not going to be a problem this season. I know Georgia's got that defense, but you've got Kyle and Kyle. Yeah, I, I I do like our offense. I think that if we're going to have a year where we are lacking in defense, this is the year. Because I, I did like how not only were we scoring a lot, it was pretty easy. Like it was, again, not everyone talks about defense and Ole Miss in the same sentence a lot. So I understand that. But it was just kind of like you can kind of see that Mullen got was in a groove. Trask was in a groove. All the players were just kind of like, oh, we know this offense now. Um, and we know um, if, if, if it's third and seven, we're not that worried. You know, if it's third and 12, it's, we're not that worried. And in the past, I was – you get third and anything more than six, and I was like, forget it. We're not – punt. get the punt team out, right? Okay. Um, but now, like as the years have gone over, gone on, the last couple of years, and in this game, it just seemed like, oh, we're not panicking. When it was tied fourteen fourteen, like, okay, we're the better team, and I didn't stress, you know, I didn't stress at least on offense, you know. So, I, I'm not too worried. I, I was at first, but I'm, I'm not too worried right now, of where we are. Yep. And I, I think Florida clearly earned their top five ranking and. And they they may be as of now power ranking for the podcast top three based on performances in Oakland losing, uh, mm-hmm. and again, not a Florida fan saying that. I I've, just for now I'll put them there. Mm-hmm. We'll see how they right. perform later on. But uh, they really impressed. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like I said I, I was pleased. I was pleased. I'll take it. I mean, I don't like the, that thirty five there. And if you watch the game, it really was out of hand. Like. It was even it sure. the, the real score. It wasn't they I mean, put up one late. They almost put up another one, but really, I mean, it was well well in hand. Yep, still cover that spread. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that, that that's a good take. I, I think I agree with almost all of that. Um, so, any final thoughts on the game? Um, I I guess the only thing is that I'm I'm glad that we are talking Gator football. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's been a long time coming and. A lot of uncertainty and doubt. Yep. It's I, different, but man, I'm, I'm so glad I'm talking Gator football. It's awesome. Sometimes I read a book and then I watch the movie remake just so I can criticize it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this whole season we're like, I love Gator football, you know, for you. And then you're like, finally, I can criticize the things that are wrong, but it makes you right. happy. And because you get to judge exactly. someone. Right. Um, <laughs> the good news is for the Forest State Miami game, there's plenty of judging to go around. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I'll, I'll follow our traditional format, positives, that'll be a short yeah. one, opportunities, and then some <laughs> neutral comments. Uh, so Florida State comes out, they lose 52-10 to 10 on the road in Miami. And I don't feel comfortable saying this, but it's true. This is something we're kind of used to right now for an FSU fan base. Uh, this is the third year in a row where we've gotten blown out by a rival. At this point, it's only been Clemson. Finally, Miami's doing it. Last year, we lost at home. To Miami, it cost Willie Tiger his job, and it was a very low-scoring game on both sides. <laughs> Last year's Miami team also lost to uh, Louisiana Tech, FIU, and I think like a Duke or someone else terrible. This year, mm-hmm. Miami actually has probably turned a corner. Not probably, they have. And you couple Manny Diaz's defense with very good offensive performance, good hires at offensive coordinator, good quarterback transfer. And that equals a very bad result for FSU on the road. There is, there's a lot of things to uncover here. Some positives was late in the game when it was already out of hand. We did have some guys come in, and this is nothing new either, that showed some promise. Mm-hmm. We, we thought that coming in the season, wide receiver would be one of our strengths. And there's been some pretty decent concerns, and I'll get into that in a second. But... Podier and some other guys that weren't get playing time earlier finally got some things done. Mm. The only time Florida State looks decent um, at any point in the game on offense is the first drive of the game and the first drive of the second half yep. because it's fully scripted or they have a game plan or they know exactly what they're going to call. Um, and, hey, 
13 points against Georgia Tech, 10 against Miami, obviously not going to win any games. There's, mm-hmm. there's no way around that. We don't have the defense to support it. We thought we did, uh, but it turns out that they just haven't played up to par. Uh, we have the unique stat of three different quarterbacks throwing an interception. I was about, I was going to say that if you, if you weren't, so I'm glad you said yeah. that. So QB play was still kind of a question. I, I'm trying to push off the negatives, but I haven't been very good at that yet. Um, we do have a pretty decent showing on protecting the deep ball against Miami. I think that was one of the positives I did take from this game was the secondary did stop the deep ball most of the time. I think one of those touchdowns early in the game was a deep pass, and so we messed up there. We got a guy named Green involved. He showed some promise. Um, we maybe made some stops in the second half, but in the first half, five consecutive touchdowns given up and a field goal. It was pretty much over then. So yeah, a little little flash from Rotomaker. He just he wasn't he didn't feel too big for the moment, or the moment didn't feel too big for him, I guess. Right. And you know he comes in late and kind of cleans up. But you know this is a guy that's really fourth on the depth chart. Uh, Jordan Travis goes out injured. We kind of used him as a wildcat. That was yeah. fun. Those first few drives where he's kind of in the slot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blackman just we talked about before. He just hasn't progressed what we wanted. And then Purdy is the guy that's like the future of the quarterback position, but he's just not 100% injury-wise because of the collarbone. So you you hesitate to rush him out there, especially in a season where uh, you just don't know where the wins are going to come from and by how much. The good news is we're bowl eligible because everyone is. Yeah. And I think that's probably a positive. You know, you have some extra game. Uh, uh, you. <laughs> I'm sputtering here. My wheels are spinning, Chris, because the positives just aren't there. You give it 500 <laughs> yards. Rescue me here. What were what were just one or two positives you took from this game for Florida State? I, I will say two guys that stood out to me. But you're right. It, it, it wasn't much. But I was impressed with um, the tight end, McDonald. Okay, yeah. Um, especially the second half. I've, he had the touchdown. Um, he seemed like second half when he got a chance, when he got the ball, six catches. I think he led the team in receiving re- receptions and yards and touchdowns. So yeah. he looked like um, a good option. I mean, it was obviously too late, but it was second half. But I saw a, a spark out of him that I was very impressed with. And um, and then uh, the, uh, the, I think the linebacker, Gaynor. I think, is Gainer a linebacker, right? Gainer, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the the first game, Georgia um, Tech, he looked pretty good. And this game too, he seems like a bright spot yeah. on defense. Um, so those guys, they stuck out as guys that want to play. Um, but that is about it. Okay. <laughs> you did, yeah. You made your field goal. You made the field goal. Yep. So that was an issue last year. So. <laughs> Yeah, there, yeah, there's there's there, there's a there's very little to take away positive here. You know, if, if you as Florida State actually cash in on those two drives that go into the red zone, then this looks like a a fifty two to twenty four loss. And that you're like, hey, we show some promise here. But Blackman throws an interception. We can't convert on a fourth down. Yep. Uh, we even got a Miami turnover off a muff punt and turn it over immediately. So. Right. Any kind of momentum was completely squashed by ourselves. It wasn't even fully like Miami earned it. We just gave it to them. Yeah. So uh, with that, I'll just, you know, some opportunities. As as Forest State fans, you watch the game. So I'm not going to harp on stuff that you saw. Um, let, me, let me address some other questions, though. You can go to a box score, ESPN, CBS Sports, whatever, and get the numbers for yourself. We're not here for that. What I want to tell you is what I think and what Chris thinks. So a lot of people are going to overreact to this and go, let's just sub out the entire unit, like on NCAA 2014 is what the last game, and we'll just play all secondary to get them experience. I'm not <laughs> so sure that's the full approach here. You don't want to do justice, and uh, I'm going to have more thoughts on the culture of Florida State in a second, so I'll hold okay. off on that. But it could affect that if you just, like, and you're not playing well, you're gone kind of deal. But you Mm -hmm. you do need to send a statement to your locker room and your players. I like that Norvell took ownership here. Uh, He wasn't there. 
He couldn't coach the game. I, I'm not so sure that would have even mattered. I think the result would pretty much have been very similar. His presence, I don't think, makes a huge difference here. Your your defense, you can't rely on. Uh, the defensive line gets pushed off the ball. There were several third and fourth and shorts for Miami that they converted just too easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had, I, I, you and I always go back to the, are you committing penalties and all this kind of <laughs> stuff, right? But the reality is no one really cares. Uh, mm-hmm. UCF had like seven false starts against East Carolina and still won very easily. Mm-hmm. It is the personality and how you approach that, you know, face masking. What do we get? Two or three of those yeah. can't have it. You know, that's stuff you got to clean up. There's, uh, I think some sports, unsportsmanlike conducts, one of them, which being Terry who had zero catches, right? He's only had one this entire year. Uh, by the way, Chris, he's not fully right to all of our fans and everything. We talked about his family issues. And then now I think there's a nagging injury from that Georgia okay. Tech hit where he's just not 100%. Okay. Uh, does it justify unsportsmanlike conduct? No. No. It does not. Uh, should it justify him being mad when he doesn't get a catch until the third quarter? No. Those are all things you need to work out because, as we saw from the Florida Gators, those are the kinds of things that they've cleaned up. They're still blocking. They're still contributing to the team. Their running backs are getting pancakes. All right? So, like, those are small things that you look at Florida State's not doing. Um, and the defense... It, there's really no unit on this team that you could rely on. The defense should be it. It should be the defensive line. Martin Wilson, Cooper, Durden, Robinson. Everyone should be contributing and making plays, and they're simply not doing it. Mm-hmm. So those are all things to work on. Special teams, I mean, the only thing you can think of is, can we improve our punting? Because we're going to be doing a lot of that this season. <laughs> and that, that shouldn't be overlooked 100%. I know a lot of teams just don't focus on it anymore. Uh, or Meyer would be like, huh, you should. I get it. Uh, Bobby Bowden would be like, you should focus on it more. And he's mm-hmm. correct, too. But I, I just don't know how much force he's doing that this season. It seems to me like that's that's a bigger focus than it's been in the past, which is good. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's just there's a lot of things here. And you have to consider some kind of circular rotation. I, I, I follow baseball a little bit. And normally a five-man rotation is standard. What if you did like a 10 man rotation where like, okay, well we can mask some deficiencies by rotating in guys more and more and giving them developmental chances. But it means in the meantime, we're not going to win as many games. That's mm-hmm. probably the approach for state needs to have. Yeah. I, I think that and I've said this before. I think that it's time for someone other than Blackman. Uh, I know that everyone's looking at Purdy, but who knows when. I would say this game is a perfect game for a Rotomaker. Um, try something different. Because, um, like you said, they're just the guys, the big name guys that you think are going to do something, haven't. Terry, something is up with him. He's a no show. He's your best offensive threat. He's a no show. On defense, your best player isn't there, Nigel Dean. But. Okay, so Gainer and Jay have been playing pretty well, right? Yeah. But Wilson, where's he at? Durden, where's he been at, right? Um, Asante Samuel Jr., He's he has some flashes. I'll, I'll give him credit for that. But these names that are supposed to be seniors or returning starters are just doing nothing. No push. Um, you, you see flashes here and there, but nothing. And the way that Miami went up and down the field, um, it, it, that's not how Florida State's defenses should be. That's not going to win you games. The way that, yeah. um, like you said, the on offense, the the drives that were not scripted were were nothing. Were nothing drives. And it's kind of like, what do you do? Do you just scrap it and just okay, we're just going to put all in the the young guys that want to be here and build for the future, which I I'm kind of leaning that way. Um. Although, Chris, why not? Why not? Because you can make a bowl anyways. Um, so I'm I'm kind of leaning that way because you knew that you knew that you were out, man. Probably out, coached, right? You knew that going into it. Mm-hmm. But just to 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 lay down like that, uh, I something 
I don't know if it's a culture thing or what, but something is is got to be fixed. But where do you what what first? You mentioned special teams. I'm like, I think there's other stuff you have to figure out first before you get to special teams. Um, it's the the ship is sinking. You're like, which hole to plug first? I, I don't know if there's enough arms to do that. You know. Let me um, ask you a question, Chris. Yeah. How do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. You nailed it. So. Florida State just needs to figure out how to eat this elephant. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the first bite? Yeah. And there's a lot of small things you can clean up. And there's a lot of big things you probably can't. If you're going to make a major shift here, and I think that's got to be the approach. Norvell's already released, like, the lineup, and it kind of implies that. When he's asked directly, he was like, well, just look at the roster, and you can tell for yourself what we're doing. He won't admittedly say, hey, there's some guys that are going to get some other starting time. And um, By the way, we've already kind of rotated in some younger guys, so this won't be like a huge shift, to be honest. Yeah. But Jacksonville State, spoiler alert, I'm going to pick Florida State to win. We'll talk about that in a second, I guess. There's really <laughs> not much to flesh out there, I'm not going to lie. You know, this is a perfect time to do this. You get Norvello's first win, you get it at home, uh, you calm the fan base down a little bit as much as you can because some are going to overreact and there already are. And you make the change you need to do. So my comments on culture. Isn't that the coach's job to change? Uh, I, I'm i going to pick on Kirk Herbstreit, which probably is the first time I've ever done this. He made a comment <laughs> like, oh, of course he has three or four wins. I'm not going to lie about that. That's probably the case for FSU. And... I, I have confidence they will pull an upset somewhere. I, whether or not that gets them that fourth or fifth win, I couldn't tell you. But, you know, this this is a head coach's job, right? To bring in people of different backgrounds, different skill sets, and make them work as a unit. Mm. So if, if your job is, oh, I'm just going to recruit a guy who fits in immediately, is the approach. How much will that work? Right. Uh, there have been plenty of teams who were national champions who their head coaches did not accomplish this, but no one cared or brought it up. Right. Okay. I'm even going to point the finger at us, Chris. This will make you very happy. What Was Jameis Winston 100% character-wise a great fit for Florida State? Probably not. But does anyone say Jimbo Fisher did a bad job of recruiting him? Of course not. Because... Winning covers a multitude of sins. We've talked about this many times. Mm -hmm. If all of these things were still happening, but Florida State was two and zero, despite the score, these things are not a problem. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing to always point to is penalties. Right? UCF is one of the most penalized teams in the country. LSU, even Florida, Florida State back in the day, they were too. No one cared. They overcame them. They can play sloppy if they want. Doesn't matter. They are twice as good as their opponent, and they're still going to kill them. So I I, I kind of disagree with the comments of like, hey, he needs to integrate the culture. No, he needs to bring in the players that work for him and make the culture happen at Florida State. Yeah, I think that the – I think Mullen has said this too. The, the types of penalties is important. It kind of goes into what you're saying with um, Terry earlier. A, a false start, a illegal motion, that is a penalty that can be fixed easily. Go to the film, practice, fix that penalty. The shoving a guy out of bounds, um, personal fouls, those are those are culture. Those are attitude things. Those are harder to fix. And I think that's where Florida State is at, trying to fix those types of penalties, those types of plays. They have to get over that first because the other stuff, you know, the offside stuff that you could fix that pretty easily. But it's the other types of penalties that are getting in there or getting into the, the timely penalties. Um, yeah. You know, that's the, the stuff that Florida State has to address. And that was the biggest thing against at least Georgia Tech where a game, as we now see, we, preseason would be like, OK, Florida State wins pretty easily. But once the game played out, we're like, OK, this one's going to be competitive. Those timely penalties are huge. Um, so 
just in my thought on the game and the FSU as a whole this season. I, I do think this team is probably a little bit worse than last year's. I, I don't think if a Florida State fan looks at the stats, the players, the leadership, the coaching, would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I was talking with someone this week, and they disagreed. That's fine. Um, there's there's plenty to say where you're like, okay, well, the opponents are better, or Florida State is good, and their schedule is harder. All good points. I, I think Florida State is returning some guys, and the biggest thing is the leadership, like you point out. Wilson and Terry are the two guys in the locker room that you have to rely on to set a precedent. Um, and if they're not doing it, leadership and on the field, that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and the team will notice that for sure. So uh, it, it looks pretty bleak right now. Forest State fans, just, just hang in there. Uh, th- this is <laughs> – I hate to be cliche, but I'm going to do it. It is part of the process. Okay, there's a lot we have to do. We do have to be patient to let this turn around. If you're just letting go coaches every two years, nothing's ever going to get fixed. Yeah, I was. Um, I think we were talking about this before we started. And although I'm glad Florida State lost, I, I definitely emphasize with with you. Um, I, I have. I I, I see you. I, I've been there. Florida fans have been there. <laughs> Um, I think Miami fans could probably say the same. We can empathize because we have been there where you're like, I don't see any way out of this. I just, I just don't, you know, well, you're in this pit. I mean, I, the lowest point for me, obviously back to back, I mean, Vandy at home and then, uh, Georgia Southern. We're just like, where do you, where do you oh. go? Oh yeah. In 2013. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I mean, in, I mean, part of that was injuries that year. A lot of it was injuries. But you're just like, we what? So I think that's where you're at right now. Um, and yes, ha- and, and, uh, anger, um, frustration, <laughs> all those are normal feelings. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's college football. You're gonna go up and down, up and down. We're up, you're down. Three years from now, you'll probably be up again. Um, so, but it's it's hard to look down. That you know when yep. you when you just lose. 52 to, to 10 to your rival. It's really hard to, but yeah, um, you got to get rid of the old stuff first before you get the new stuff. I like it. Um, yeah. And if you're okay with that, I'm going to transition into another Florida team. Yes. Um, who knows even more about this because UCF was 0 and 12 in 2015. Right. And so if you ask them, they're like, Hey, we know all about losing to Furman. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yet they came back and, you know, they set NCAA history by winning all their games two years later. Mm-hmm. Um, so great for them. But they were victorious at home, on the road, excuse me, against the ECU. And depending on where the line fell, they covered the spread. I think it was early in the week they covered it. If it was the one later in the week, probably not. But it was close. And they destroyed the Pirates, as we thought. So sorry to you, Chris. I know you like the ECU Pirates a little bit. You know, not, I do. Not, not I, that you've yeah, lost kinda. sleep or anything. I did not at all lose okay. sleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do like them. Yep. Um, and UCF looking good. This is probably one of the best years to return a lot of offensive experience. And I will I will say this until Randy Shannon leaves. He has the perfect defensive strategy for the offense that his team runs. Is it perfect for every team? No. Because they give up a ton of yards. Mm-hmm. Their goal, obviously, is to always force turnovers, and they're probably in the nation in that right now. It's early, but they are always trying to strip the ball, pick it off, which means you're going to miss, and they're going to get a 20 yard gain on something that should have been two yards. Okay, they're willing to concede that because their offense gets the ball back faster. But uh, UCF looking really good right now. Um, so they they take it to the ECU Pirates. Surprisingly, that matchup, from what I've seen, is pretty close for some reason the pirates always played them uh to a contest that went down on the wire uh that was at least until about four years ago and then ucf just kind of ran away with it mm-hmm. uh but they get an easy win on the road they improved to 2-0 yeah n- not much else to add to that i mean gabriel over 400 yards again i mean how many times has he, has he done that right but then you, you couple that with over 200 yards rushing that's real hard to 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 stop, and their fast pace offense that is tough. That is real tough. But now you have a a decent defense, and I I, I kind of see Florida 
being like a UCF where you're going to, you just know, Hey, we're going to give up some, some touchdowns, but we also know that we're going to put up a lot more touchdowns. And if we can just, yeah. I think if you watch UC, a lot of UCF games, the first half is always kind of neck and neck, but the second half, it's a blowout. Yeah. I think, I think, I think even, you're going to see more, more of the same. Even toward the end of the second quarter, UCF starts to pull away. They're right, kind of right. feeling each other out and, the other team has mm-hmm. some kind of other strategy. I think UCF had, I'm not exaggerating here, seven false starts. Four false starts, Chris, before their first snap of the play, of the game. Yeah. Um, and that's, that. that had to have set another NCAA record. But it later you later come to find out, uh, t- UCF fans, this should be a compliment to how good your team is. Other teams playing you are trying to cheat. Um. The reason that they had four false stars before the first play of the game even got off is because their defensive line was barking out fake signals, which, of course, is illegal. Ah. Uh, and then the team was warned about it, and then it stopped, and then UCF was off to the races. Right, right. So consider it pure joy, my brothers, when other people try to cheat against you <laughs> because that means you've made it. Right. What is it? Yeah. Okay. You're there if they, they're using cheating to beat you. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to get an advantage. Did it work? Of course not. They, they weren't skilled. That's the only thing they can resort to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they went easily. And I, I think all but two, three games this season, it's going to be the same result for the Knights. Yeah. 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 There's, was it Memphis and Cincy? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so last game was FIU um, playing, finally playing Liberty yeah. and losing. Uh, started off the game with a hundred yard um, kickoff for the the Panthers for a touchdown, and it was back and forth, um, and they just could not pull it out at the end. Um, so I thought they actually might uh, pull, the way they're playing towards the end there. I thought they were going to pull it off, but they could not. Yeah, I uh, I was very happy. It was very close. It was it was mm. kind of down on the wire, and yeah. it was. Uh, my Liberty pick held up, so I was yeah. happy about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. If I was like, I picked Liberty, but I kind of want the Panthers to win. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm just glad that they're actually playing. I'm sure, pretty sure they're glad they're actually playing. Sure, sure. As opposed to other teams in Florida, <laughs> <laughs> have to wait yet again. Exactly. So yeah, the South Florida FAU game does not happen, right. and you just have to constantly wait. I'm, the Owls, you know. Maybe they play this weekend. Maybe they don't. It's hard to tell. Uh, supposedly, Houston's going to play their first game of the season. Uh, and, you know, hey, it's still more than the Big Ten or Pac-12. So, there you go. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe you can hang your hat on that, I guess. True. Yep. Uh, man, well, that's that's a crazy – I don't know. We Do we call this week three? I would call it week three just for Yeah, continuity. I've heard four. I've, I mean, for me, it's one. But, yeah, week three. I, 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 like I counted, like, the first matchups as week zero. That's why – I yeah, came at yeah. three. Who knew, really knows this year? Right. Um, I think we're all pretty comfortable with there being multiple postponements and or cancellations. So thank you uh, to the community for riding the wave with us because we don't know either. <laughs> 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 uh, but as of now, we do have some games we want to preview for next week. Uh, so tell me about your Gators, Chris. Yeah, they they moved up a little bit in the polls and they host South Carolina. Um we see old Mush Champ again in the swamp, and I South Carolina played really, really good um, back and forth against Tennessee, and mm-hmm. they lost uh, in the most Mush Champ way. Um, <laughs> but they're getting the ball with like two minutes left to potentially <sighs> score, and of course, they're one of their blockers. The ball um, hits him, and Tennessee recovers and. Wins the game, so that's definitely that's must champ for you, and that's why he's playing at South Carolina, coaching at South Carolina. Um, but <laughs> I, you know, coming in, obviously the, the, you have concerns for our defense. Um, I'm not really too worried as much with South Carolina on offense as I was to as Ole Miss. I think they're, they're, we're going to share some things up there. They have they have a new quarterback. Like I said, they played better than, than they. I thought they were going to. Yeah. Um, you do have to worry about, a little bit about their rushing attack. Um, 
but I, I don't think that they can do enough. Um, they can hang with us enough. Um, Muschamp is a defensive guy, especially defensive backs. Okay. But again, they might they might get some pressure on, on Trask because Trask really wasn't. I don't think he, he fell down once against Ole Miss. I would expect a little <laughs> bit more pressure um, from South Carolina. Okay. Um, I, I would expect them to do some things to take, try to take Pitts out of the game. But I just don't see them hanging a whole game with us. Um, I think they're going to maybe put up some points. I think we're going to put up a lot more points. <laughs> um, so I really think to, uh, that uh, our offense keeps keeps going. I'm going to go Gators. I think the line is 17 and a half. Yeah. I'm going to go 38-20. Um, maybe I, I really want to go like 41, 20, um, but I'm going to go 38, 20. Cause I know much champion. He's a defensive guy. And he, okay. he will, um, he'll bring it for sure. So I'm going to go 38 to 20 Gators win. Okay. Uh, I, I already have my pick locked and loaded. I promise you, I'm going to ask you this question. It won't affect my decision. Okay. It has must champs defense. Well, does his defense at South Carolina equal any defense he's had at Florida? No. Okay. Then, then yeah, I think Florida scores thirty four in this one. Okay. Um. Actually, you're at home. I'll just let's say thirty four. But I, 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 I liked how tough they put Tennessee. I, yeah. Who knows what Tennessee is right now? I know I don't. Right. Uh, there's always a lot of hype around the balls. I don't really know why, <laughs> to be honest. What have they done in the last 10 years to impress? Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. understand. Right. But I I don't really know as much about South Carolina as you would. So I'm going to take them maybe 17. It, it feels like Florida covers the spread pretty comfortably, especially at home. I know yeah, there's been a true. couple of years when Spurrier was there that they've tripped up, but I, I have no reason to believe it now. And South Carolina might be the worst team in the East. I don't really see them having any competition for the Gators. Yeah, Vandy played pretty good against A and M, so you might be right. Yeah, if I did power rankings, maybe by the end of the season, Vandy's still the worst. But uh, it's really sad because I love defenses. I think twenty five years ago, like Muschamp is a hero and he's the most sought after head coach in the nation <laughs> kind of deal. But yeah, now yeah. we're talking twenty twenty when offenses are rolling. And like Houston Baptist almost beats Texas Tech, and that guy is probably wanted as a head coach somewhere. So right. it's a very different atmosphere. Uh, but I, I think Florida covers. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think they do too. Um, I mean, there are some concerns. Like you have a, a, a worse offense than Ole Miss coming in, and a better better defense mm. than Ole Miss. Um, but yeah, at home. Even though the crowd isn't going to be full capacity, now that we can tweak some stuff, yeah, I, I think it's going to be um, fairly, fairly easy. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it's back and forth for the first quarter, quarter and a half. I wouldn't be surprised if it's <laughs> uh, tighter than we sh- it should be at halftime. But for four quarters, I think we're going to be the better team. I'd be very surprised, even if that's the case. Yeah, I think Florida dominates from the start, but. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. You're crazy. Yeah, I, hope, the, I, I don't think right. I don't think a lot of teams can beat Florida. Florida would have to beat themselves. Yeah, at this I, point, I agree. I'm not yeah. trying to hype them up either. I really think that the momentum from last season has carried over, and that's not always the case. LSU lost mm-hmm. their first game, obviously, but I know they're decimated with people, so I'm not going to go there. Um, yeah. So I will say our, our path to the the SEC championship got got a lot easier because Georgia obviously. They didn't look good, but I still think Georgia is still a good team. I agree. Uh, but they play Auburn, Alabama, us, and now – I mean, Mississippi State's on their <laughs> schedule. Well, that game didn't look like much, but now, whoo, Georgia-Mississippi State. I mean – Could be very scary. Yeah. SEC and record LSU. week one. This is the KJ Costello who lost to UCF. Yeah. This is – this is no joke. Mike Leach is probably the real deal. People get used to it. 
<laughs> I'm just glad he's in the West. Yeah. I'm just glad he's in the West and it's on our schedule. I think Bama yeah, still so Georgia, the, Anyway, tangent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Georgia, although they didn't look good, I still think they're a really good team. I mean, yeah. As long as you got good defense, I think you're you're fine. And they'll, they'll figure out the quarterback situation. Yeah. But their schedule got a little bit tougher. Yep. Sure did. A little bit tougher. So. Um, Four State schedule also got tougher, but mm-hmm. it does not matter. Four State will win this weekend. I'm going to call it. I'm guaranteeing a victory here. This is Jacksonville mm-hmm. State. Okay. So people are like, let's 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 worry about Florida State winning against a D2 team. The the three things Chris are going to point to is mm-hmm. in 2006 they almost lost to Troy. In 2018 they almost lost to Samford. In 2009 they almost lost to Jacksonville State. The team we're playing this week. Mm-hmm. Let me debunk some theories here. Uh, 2006, Troy. Troy is a Sun Belt team. That's Division One. They almost beat us in one of our worst seasons ever. Uh, and they still won. 2018, Samford. That's a little scary. However, Samford had a guy named Devlin Hodges, who was one of the best Division Two quarterbacks in NCAA history. <laughs> and Florida State knew he would be trouble. It's still one by 10. Now it took a late pick six, but we still pulled it off and got Willie Taggart his first win. So playing one of our worst games among one of our worst teams ever still beat a Div 2 team. 2009 Jacksonville State, the very last season for Bobby Bowden, we had absolutely no defense. That was a game where a guy named Ryan Perilou, sound familiar, actually mm-hmm. transferred out of LSU to Jacksonville State and gave Florida State's defense all kinds of problems. That was a game where Florida State actually trailed 7-9 to nine with two minutes to go and still won the game. So, the best of the best of Division 2 or the middle of the road versus the middle of the road D1, D2, Florida State's still going to triumph. Uh, Jacksonville State was 6-6 six and six last year in their conference. The year before that, losing record. Nobody of note, and they haven't played a game this year. So, Florida State wins comfortably. There's no line. There's no spread. There's no overrunner in this game because they don't just don't care. Vegas, you know, whatever. Uh, Florida State will win pretty comfortably. I don't know by how much. If I were to guess, they win by like 21, 28. But at this point, it's really hard to tell. New teams come in the gate. Yeah, just like Florida versus South Carolina. It will look a little bit different and ugly the first quarter and a half. After that, Florida State will be fine. Not so fast, my friend. Excuse me. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, wrong, wrong league course or line. Closer than the experts. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I got my, my league course. But there's line. no expert line on this one. What's your take, I though? Know, Get, there isn't. Go ahead. I, I mean, Jacksonville State's just not good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just looking at their last. Oh, uh, yeah, they're not good. Yeah. Um, they didn't play this, yet this year, but. But Florida State, they're not looking good either. I mean, Georgia Tech. I mean, I'll, okay, I'll give you the Miami, but Georgia Tech, that Georgia Tech loss. Georgia Tech is not good. Um, so obviously, Florida State should win. I think they're gonna win, but I think it's gonna be closer because they got to figure out what they're doing at quarterback. They got to figure out if Terry is gonna play. Um, if they continue to, I think if they feed um, McDonald. I think that's a, that's a good good start. Um, Gainer and Jay on defense. If they lead the defense, um, do you, what's the status on Nigel Dean? What is his? Have they said anything? He's just, he's back on the roster. Um, okay. I would be very surprised, Chris, if he's back before a meaningful game. I mean, after Jacksonville State, we have Notre Dame. I wouldn't even play him for that. I mean, he's coming off of a, a horrific knee injury from November of last year against Florida. Yeah. Um. So he's around, but Florida State in this game can still play horribly and win. Um, they just we just we just have better athletes. It doesn't look like it now because of the competition we've had. But uh, you mentioned McDonald, and I mean he scored one of our two touchdowns this season. That is sad to say, but true. Um, there you go. But to Philly, all well, the other running backs out of the backfield, Corbin. You know they're they're going to get loose in this game. Um, and so I, I understand the uh, the hesitation here. I just this is one of the rare times, Chris. We just completely disagree. Florida State wins comfortably. 
I'm going to go Florida State 30, Jacksonville State 17. 30. Hmm. Score prediction. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, Jacksonville State's just, athletes wise, we just have a matchup here. I Give, just I haven't seen anything from Jack. I mean, because they haven't played yet. Yeah. So we just don't know. But they're just, they're just not good. They're Div 2. Um, give me FSU 41, Jacksonville State 20. It's almost exactly what you said, South Carolina. Okay. Almost exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to go. And I don't even know if they score 20. It may be worse than that, but I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt. I I mean, I just, given the history that you just gave me with all the lower teams. I know, but here's the thing, though. Like 2006, Four State's terrible. We scored 51 against Duke, and that was when they were in their their run of their worst drought ever of wins. Uh, I just think Four State is going to be fine and comfortable in this game. It's just what precedent do you set for the rest of the year? Right. We agree, though, they're going to score more two two touchdowns. No, more than two touchdowns. Okay. I'd, I'd bet a mortgage on it. We, okay. Oh, 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 wow. Okay. I didn't say everything. I, I said a mortgage. I, I didn't say if it was – it could be anyone's mortgage. I'll, I'll bet their mortgage. Someone else's mortgage. I like Trust me, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Florida State's offense will do just gotcha. fine. They, they will do fine gotcha. this game. Okay. Okay. I think it's going to be a little bit closer – um, just, I just, I'm going on history. That's what, I get it. That's all I got. I got nothing with Jacksonville state. I don't, I don't know anything about them. I'm just going with history. History I don't know is on much my either. side. I couldn't even name one person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I don't force it to be fine. Um, but your, your reasoning is very founded. We'll go with, I'm pretty sure they have a Williams or a Smith or a Jones. I'm, I'm going to go Jones. Jones or yeah. a Jackson. <laughs> I hear Jackson's yeah. good on the, but, yeah. By, by, by the way, people that don't know Florida, Jacksonville State is not in Florida. This is Jacksonville, Alabama. Yeah. Just yeah. FYI. Okay. That's a good clarification. Yeah. Good clarification. It happens all the time. Um, yeah. yeah. Move around the state. UCF home for the first time this year. Mm-hmm. Not gonna have any problem against Tulsa for many reasons. Number one, Tulsa is not good at football. Mm-hmm. They weren't even good last year when they beat UCF. Uh, UCF beat themselves, and uh, they just jinxed themselves on the road multiple times. And UCF will not forget that. They are rolling. UCF comfortably covers a 21.5-point spread. Um, Heupel made this comment while I was watching the ECU game. I said, I don't think he wants to go for it on fourth down all the time, but he feels like he has to prove a point to the playoff committee and mm-hmm. doesn't feel like he has a choice. Gotcha. So that's why late in the game, UCF's not kicking field goals. They're trying to score right. again. Now, I notice they don't try as hard because they kind of probably feel bad for the other team. <laughs> but it's also the job of the other team to stop them, to quote right. the, main, the late, great Steve Spurrier of UF. <laughs> late? He's, he's alive. Well, yeah. <laughs> he is. I meant, like, not coaching anymore. I, I got I got yeah. you. But uh, UCF, no problem at Tulsa. Bet yeah. the over on this game because UCF returns their starters and they will cover. Yeah, I just, yeah, that's that's my my take is yeah. Okay, concur. <laughs> um, so Miami, they have a bye before their date with Clemson. Huh. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, South Florida, the Bulls will travel to Cincinnati. It'll be. A lesser version of their Notre Dame visit. Cincinnati should handle this one pretty well. The Bulls are still figuring things out. They had to skip a week due to like tracing from COVID. Right. Uh, I, you know, it's, 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 this is a first year. You and I, Chris, are just, we're super fans and we're, I would say, semi experts because we're very good about picking teams 55 to 70% of the time, which is good. Mm -hmm. Um, this season, it, it is a wild card. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go back and look at the 2007 college football season where all chaos just ensued for no reason and our national champion had two losses, <laughs> go right ahead. I feel like 2020 is kind of matching up to those standards. So what do we know about South Florida? They beat Citadel 
but had a close matchup against them and lost to Notre Dame and had to take a week off. Yeah. So we re- really know very little. Um, we've seen some carryover. They are breaking in a new head coach who does have a win. <laughs> of course, they doesn't have that yet. So <laughs> it's hard to say. But Cincinnati is mm-hmm. too good. They have too much experience. I-, I think they handle the Bulls at home. Yeah, I, I like you said, Florida, South Florida does. They don't know what they're doing yet. <laughs> and, um, and Cincy looks like a pretty decent team. Uh, so yeah, I think Cincy and Cincy big. Yep, I yeah. agree. I'm <laughs> curious at this point in the season, yeah. just after the game so far, who wins more games this year, South Florida, or Florida State? I gotta look at their schedule. I, th- mm, that's a real good question. We'll let we'll look that up. We'll let the the fans decide too. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta think about that. Um, one. While you're looking that up, not much to add here. Florida Atlantic will host Charlotte. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. <laughs> FAU looking to get their season started under Taggart. It just hasn't happened yet because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, FAU favored by six. Charlotte, a pretty decent team. I know that Florida State got one of Charlotte's old coaches. But uh, who are you taking, the Owls or the Charlotte team? Uh, I'm going to go hoot hoot. I'm going to hold old Taggart. I think he gets his. First game actually played, and he actually gets a win. I'm going to concur. I know, boring. But um, <laughs> Charlotte is pretty decent. Uh, they they have a lot of good culture set up. They have some pretty decent coaches on staff. Um, six points, it, it's, again, kind of a guess. We just don't know what either team is going to offer. Um, mm-hmm. I'll take FAU to win, but Charlotte to cover. How about that? Okay, good. S- split it, okay. Yep. And then the FIU Panthers. What do you got there, Chris? Um, they are off this week. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so, that's right. I scheduled off, not a, a forced off. We were talking uh, before the show. Like we were surprised that they didn't fill the game. So I was just, yeah, you know, uh, find someone. You know, at this point, anybody wants to play. Yeah, they were supposed to play UCF this year, and uh, obviously the Knights are kind of busy at home, mm-hmm. so it, it's hard to fill these games, as you can tell. But yeah. Um, man, well, that's a that's a pretty decent week. Uh, I would think mm-hmm. everybody feels comfortable, except for the South Florida fan base, that they're going to win this weekend. So that's that's right. kind of a positive, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm in. I think we we got five games coming up. This was this the most that we've had. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess Florida State played Miami, but still, five different games to cover. True. True. So. Starting to feel real. Yes, it is. I like it. I like um, it. Man, well, we're off and running, Chris. It is. Yeah. It is finally 2020 season, and it feels mm-hmm. like it because we got a full slate to recap and talk about going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, where can the fans reach out to us if they have any comments? FloridaFocusPodcast dot com. Yes, that is the main hub for all your Florida focus needs. And whatever podcast player of choice you use, we are now on Amazon Music. One of the biggest platforms in all the U.S. So if you're listening to us there, thank you. Uh, give us a review and let us know what you think of the show. So Yeah, yeah, please do. Um, any final thoughts before we sign off and head into this next week, Chris? Um, just a quick one. I was looking at South Florida's schedule versus Florida State. I'm going to go Florida State getting more wins. Um, just because I know Florida State a little bit more. But, I mean, South Florida, Memphis, Houston, Navy, UCF to end – plus Cincy. So I think they might get, I mean, East Carolina, Temple, Tulsa, their best chances to win. So four games. Yeah. So and the question is that that's, it's a very good observation, which games get actually played. And then right. which, which ones do these teams win? Right. I, I still think four is a four win team. So they might be the uh, about equal then that, that means they're probably at, at Duke, as we've seen, is pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, still pretty bad. I think Florida State is still better than them. NC State, probably. A little more coin flip-ish with that mm-hmm. one. But um, FSU has the talent. And if everyone plays up, we just don't know what game that will be. They yeah. still win a game here and there that they're not supposed to. So, yeah. I mean, Florida State winning four games is not crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... 
I think South Florida is going to win three or four, so maybe right there. It's good. Okay, that's a really good question. I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll, we'll keep track of that. Yeah, I'll take the Knowles in this one, but I'm not. I'm not confident in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. All right. Well, Chris, thank you as always. I appreciate uh, the yep. good perspective. Um, man, episode eighty nine. This point, We're pushing a hundred. We're getting there. We should man. give away like something. We'll see. Um, but anyway, this is Brandon. Uh, I love the Knowles forever. Single Knowles. It's Chris. Go Gators. <laughs>